Docklands was supposed to be the Big Bang. It was established in 1997 to reclaim the port and attract a vibrant and diverse community. But does it work? It's all this glass and steel and chrome in the middle and it's very, very windy. It, seemed to, it doesn't seem to be that many people here sort of uh, during the day. Um, Scotland's always give me a very peaceful kind of feeling because we're so near the water. But it's just too damn cold. <laughs> Docklands is very windy. It's, it's all this glass and steel and chrome in the middle and it's very, very windy. So the glass and the steel and the chrome create wind tunnels and planning has just sort of smashed in. Docklands is isolated. And I think it just lacks a soul of a place. So Docklands is a place that lacks a little bit of vitality and lacks a little bit of uh, interactive with the public. People come here to work and go home or either come just to go home. As national and international students, designers and architects gather in Docklands for an urban design competition, we are forced to question the success of the Docklands area. The Urban Realities event, which is a design challenge based in Docklands, um, and it involves 100 participants who are divided into 10 teams, um, and they each have a separate design brief. Um, we're looking at the Docklands in, in a way like a, a body or a system that has flaws or faults or um, difficulties with its organ. Exploring. We're exploring the idea of wind, as we said before, we've got a really windy site um, and we're trying to relate that to the idea of breathing, so office workers in their buildings can look down on our site, we want to engage them in our space. And so our whole concept and idea is to create a destination, so something that would be significantly, in, as you can see the, the size of the frames, significantly in size and scale to be seen from a distance. And also uh, as you approach it in a pedestrian level, you'll be able to access it and it will give you a sort of transitional space. How can we make Docklands an area where people want to stay? So um, right now it seems like a symptom of not having people down here is being treated through um, a sort of in a sort of event-based spectacular way, and um, you know I don't know, but I reckon maybe um, it, it's a finer grain than that. It's not about the sort of moments that bring people out, but um, hopefully if they could sort of figure out a way to keep people here in a um, much less spectacular way, that's what's going to help the Docklands. I would take out the uh, Telstra Dome or the Adiham Stadium and uh, make it an open space. Probably spoke to probably spoken to 150 people in 72 hours. One person said they like the space. Um, I like the creativity and um, the, the colour and just the difference in the buildings. I think um, nothing's like box shaped, it's all um, different. It's so frequently it's reflected in the water that's grey, the, the concrete all around, particularly on the other side of that wharf. It's, it's grey, it's depressing, it's miserable and it's highly priced. All the restaurants are ridiculously expensive. observed to have um, body dysmorphia um, syndrome, so it's unable to expand or see itself as um, capable of acquiring certain spaces that are around it. Perhaps Docklands needs to take a look at itself, diagnose its body dysmorphia and figure out what it really wants to be and who it really wants to attract before all the lights go off on this isolated harbour town.